We're here with Andy Ross. Hello again. Now, I hope you joined us last time because we talked about Blue Plate Special, which I hope it was a good show. It was a fantastic show. <laughs> they threw roses at us, and oh, that's we had a parade afterwards. That's I got amazing. to ride on the back of a Corvette. You know, I, I actually took the Lamborghini out there this time. Oh, I thought I, I thought that might have been yours. Yeah. yeah, you know, I didn't want to bring attention to myself. So. Well, and I, I hope it wasn't too tough that I entered the stage dressed like Ric Flair. I no, hope that was no, that was much. the best part. That oh, was good. the perfect way to. We were all the way which wrestler yeah. we wanted to be. Yeah, I you mean, know. it was kind of uncool how the security made me put on pants again. But eh, well, that's I'm we're, like, we're, we're hey, trying to train that guy. I'm a stranger in Greece. Yeah, so, they, they have a strict pants policy. <laughs> well, we have another blue plate special to look forward to coming up the 20, later in February. 23rd. 23rd. Okay. February 23rd. So that'll be the Capitol Theater. Capitol Theater Greenville. Greenville. 7 o'clock, $5. Right on. I'm going to be. At, I'm gonna try to be at one of those. Awesome. Uh, as if the other one didn't happen. Well, you, you, uh, you mean you're going to be at both of them. That's right. I was at both of them, obviously. You were so enthusiastic in the audience. I was like, that's the man who interviewed me this week. <laughs> I wish you would turn off that light in my face. <laughs> Interview's over, buddy. <laughs> well, let's talk about Andy. All right. Now, I know, I first knew of you, I think like most people would go, oh, that guy from your loafer article. Yeah. So you've been doing that how long? 13 years this June. Wow. And, and I, I give it to you. I'm, I'm a critical person, and I look forward to your, your Thank articles. Thank you very much. I appreciate and that. I'm going to be honest and go, the loafer is... Look at the ads and read Andy's column. Thank you. And maybe see who's coming to, you know, what classic rock band is coming to Freedom Hall. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I apologize for the occasional off week that I have now and then. At least to me, I think they're off week. So, you know, the crazy thing, sometimes I'll write something that I'm like, well, this isn't particularly good, but I got a deadline, so I'll push it out. And that'll be the one people are like, that was so good. I'm like, okay. But you, you, put, you have an article in every, every issue. Week. Yeah, and I, I don't think I've... I've repeated a theme, but I don't think I've ever like repeated the exact yeah. same topic. The thing is, you, they all can't be winners. No, no, you, you not do when you one do every issue. Fifty-two a year. You're gonna have some that, yeah. that aren't aren't the, the greatest, but but I hope there's one thing that's really that's really good yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm a big movie fan, and I know you are too. Oh, yeah. And that's another thing that that grabs me when you really start to get deep into some of these movies that I love. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this dude gets it. And what what started your your love of movies? I knew when I was a kid I enjoyed them. Like I enjoy like I remember the first film my parents took me to when I was four was Ghostbusters 2. Uh, I vividly remember seeing it, but I remember saying, oh I, I like these. these. These are cool, these movies. But I remember when I was seven years old, and for some reason I remember this vividly. Seven years old, I was channel surfing and it was A and E. I remember stopping on A and E was a Saturday afternoon and the announcer said, Coming up next, the great comedy classic Duck Soup. Uh, and I thought, that's a weird name for a movie. <laughs> okay, I'm going to watch the start of this. And the second I saw Groucho Marx, I fell in love. Oh, without a doubt. Went to him for Halloween that year. <laughs> that's awesome. How old were you? Seven. Seven-year-old dressed as Groucho. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's and awesome. Once I saw Duck Soup, I had to see other Marx Brothers oh, films. I, I just started exploring the classics. And that's when it really started to snowball for me. Marx Brothers are... My number one. They're, yeah. they're my heart. They're, they're where everything begins and ends with yeah. me. I'm in a good mood. I'm going to watch my Marx Brothers movies. I'm in a bad mood. I'm going to watch, watch my Marx Brothers. Brothers. Yeah, absolutely. I get it. And so from that love, you ended up, you're you're on the board of uh, On the board Capitol. of the Capitol. And so Coincidentally, we're Blue Blades performing, you know. How about that? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that movie series that you're doing there, it's always a movie that I go, all right, what, yeah. what movies have you done in the past as part of your series at the Capitol? Uh, we, we show a wider range as part of the classics of the Capitol series, which I'm really proud of. Yeah. I, I like to do things that are unpredictable. So in the first year of it, we did uh, Muppet Christmas Carol, and we showed Clue, and we showed uh, His Girl Friday, the great Carrie Ray comedy, and Charade. And one of my favorites. I love, sorry, no. I love Charade it's more than almost any of those other movies. It's such. <laughs> that movie, every time I watch it, I'm just like, this movie, it's perfect. Yeah. It's a perfect score. It's a perfect. It's. I love Charade. If you've never seen Charade, you should watch Charade. Absolutely. It's the movie that when, when an alien goes, what is movie? 
let me show you charade, my friend. Sure, sure, charade, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had okay. to interrupt with with that one. My favorite, that one of my favorites that we did was the first one I ever got to do at the Capitol, and it was from being with Blue Play that the Capitol people got to know me, ah. and I was about to ask, would you like to program some Halloween movies? And I said, sure. So well, you're I'm, talking I'm, my language. I'm a big fan of William Castle. Yes, big fan of William Castle. Because to me, I'm like, when when has anyone made a movie that's like being on a carnival ride? And his films are all like being on carnival rides. Right. And you can kind of see where the seams are, but that makes it better. Like, they're fun. I love his weird world. So I said, okay, I want to show House on Haunted Hill, the original. And they said, okay, cool. And then I said, and I want to do the gimmick. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Which, <laughs> For Sorry. people who don't know William Castle, all of his films had a gimmick. Like he he wired the seats to vibrate for one film, and gave people ghost viewers that would let them see or take out the ghost. But for House on Haunted Hill, he had a gimmick called Emerge, in which during a crucial moment in the film, a skeleton flies over the audience. <laughs> so I said to these people at the historic Capitol Theater, I, I want to rig a skeleton to fly over the audience. And they were like, Cool. Okay. Oh my god, if I'd known that. Oh, that was just the start of it. Once I knew they were okay with that, I said, okay, here's what I also want to do. So people who came to see House on Haunted Hill were greeted by, and I used people from Blue Play yeah. to pull this off with, were greeted by my friend Aaron, dressed as a nurse. And people had to sign this legal paper <laughs> yes. that said, it said, this is a fright waiver. By signing this, you absolve the capital of any responsibility if you should die of fright while watching House on Haunted Hill. Yes. And we had a cardboard <laughs> skeleton on fishing wire that we pulled during a crucial scene. And the last line of the film was a guy looks at the camera and says, and then the ghost will come for you. So I said to a buddy of mine, Chris, who's in Blue Plate 2, I said, well, um, okay, who says that? I want you to scream and run out of the theater. <laughs> so it gets to that party, he jumps up, oh my god! Runs out of the theater, and then as the audience was leaving, he's being rocked by Aaron, dressed up like the nurse, like he's a baby. And he's whimpering. And it was the most beautiful... Oh, brilliant. I would oh like to think that somewhere William Castle was really smiling. Like, this, this kid gets it. Please do the tingler. I want to... I, I have instructions for how to make the boxes. Talk it's about, just, it's the budget will be the thing. Talk about having to sign a waiver. Oh man, I, I, I would show the tingler in, in a heartbeat. That's one of my favorite movies. Terrible movie, but I would be right there. It's so good. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with that movie because I'd heard of how Castle wired the seats with yeah. electric shocks. Yeah. And I was obsessed. I, I thought that when I was in high school, I really went to real to real theaters. And I was like, look, I can do the tingler. Uh, I can run electricity to all these. I know how to do this. Yeah. And they were the sweetest people, and they're like, bless your heart. Yeah. We're not running electricity. We're not running electricity. Through electricity our, our film yeah, guy. I've, I've got the instructions as to how to make the, the kit. But, oh, that's um, awesome. That's, that's, I kind of want to do homicidal next, because that would be the easiest game oh, to pull off. Yeah. It's just a coward's <laughs> <laughs> It's That's real simple. That's awesome. Yeah. Especially considering the uh, the House on Haunted Hill remake they just did, yeah, it made me think that that movie could could have been served with a couple skeletons, a couple flying, skeletons through. flying over the audience. Yeah. I mean, it's like <laughs> if Netflix could could harness that promotion. I if Netflix did more William Castle stuff, I I would be completely <laughs> on board. Like, yeah, send me a Tingler box. That's awesome. Get the Tingler on your site and use some of your excess wealth <laughs> to send Tingler boxes to people. So you took your passions and just you pick the movies that you feel are the right movies this time. And I feel all right. Uh, I pick ones that I think will get a big crowd into the Capitol because I do want the I do want to do well by the Capitol. And you know, there, there are one or two a year where I'll be like, okay, this is for me. Yeah. This is my. This is just for me. And I sometimes think, well, maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Uh, this year I got a whole bunch that actually let me start a cult classic series. Oh. Love it. I'm very excited about. Um, which we kicked off with kids in the hall brain candy. <laughs> Saw that theater the day it came out. Yeah. Absolutely. Cat in my head! Cat in my head! <laughs> it's one of the funniest things I've ever yeah. seen. I thought I was going to pass out. We had only 12 people, but they were real enthusiastic. Eh, it'll grow. It'll grow. Right. Our next one will be Cabin Boy. Oh, Cabin Boy is yeah. another classic. Cabin Boy. Hey, you want to buy a monkey? Yo, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I am. I am. I am beyond thrilled. The two this year, though, that I programmed for me is in the same weekend, on a Friday night and a Saturday, uh, Friday night will be Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Love and then it. the following Saturday, UHF, the Weird Al movie. I saw both of those on opening day, too. I was, 
I, I used to go see every movie that interested me. Those are classic. That, uh, is the series doing okay? The Capitol happy it's doing with the well, turnout? Yeah, it's actually been one of the one of the, the, the most successful things we, we have going. Uh, you know, we awesome. have great crowds. It just attendance from the first year shot a. Uh, like tripled in some instances for films yeah. in the year two, and it's just we've had so many sellouts. We we had we showed Smokey and the Bandit at the start of the year that sold out. Love it. We just did Groundhog Day on Groundhog Day, <laughs> that did really well. Um, we're, we've got Seven Brides for Seven Brothers coming up, and that looks like it's going to sell out. Like it's selling tickets pretty heavily already. That's awesome because a lot of these old theaters are. I mean, a lot of them just went up. Yeah, they're in, gone. In smoke because the Capitol almost did. It was almost pulled up yeah. in terms of parking. Yeah, because. It, there was a time when the analog had to be phased out. Yeah. You, you couldn't do analog movies anymore. And yeah. if your theater opened in 1939, you're not going to have digital yet, no. you, in most cases. Yeah. And so We're uh, lucky that we, 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 we got the equipment to do digital. You were saying it's, it sounds like a pretty impressive It's a laser system. projection system. It's very nice, very top awesome. of the line. Um, movies look really good there. It, it, like just as someone who is picky about how movies look right yeah I, 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 well I try to make them look the best I can we have a great technical crew John Brown who handles oh, our yeah. sound is wonderful yeah, yeah. Um, and we all just we all just want to really have a great experience when they come to the Capitol and I feel like you know it would be easy to do classic movies greatest hits it would be easy to spell Wizard of Oz Gone of the Wind Casablanca Citizen Kane all great movies but I want to do stuff like oh, okay we'll do Casablanca and then we'll show Clue Okay. I love it because you're curating the movies. That, exactly. You're not you're not just finding what's popular. You're curating the experience for the movies that I know the movies I love. Yeah. And and I always get up before each film and do a little a little kind of what I think is a TCM style just to give yeah. people some context. Yeah. Because one of the coolest experiences we had was we showed Creature from the Black Lagoon. A group of high school students came, and I said to them, "Have you all heard of this?" They're like, "No, this just sounded cool. We wanted to come see it." And after the film, I said, well, did y'all think that? Like, that was really cool. Oh, that's awesome. I was like, yay, I introduced people to the Gill Man. <laughs> so how many how, how many of these have you done thereabouts? Movies, uh, we try to have at least once a, one, one a month. I've been This will be my third year. We're doing two a month this year. We also have a family movie night, which other people curate. A cult classic series. Uh, I've done so at least 24, probably 20, almost 30 films this morning. That's awesome. And I think it's one of those things, again, here, especially in Johnson City and the Tri Cities, it's easy to get caught in that bubble. Yeah, and you don't look outside. And there's of, not—I mean, there's not many people around here who do repertory film on a regular no, basis. No, no, and that's—I mean, it's one of my passions that I, I honestly I kind of gave up on because yeah. if I want to go see something like a revival, I want to see an appreciated movie, I got to go to Nashville. Yeah. I got to go to maybe maybe Charlotte sometimes. Uh, yeah. Definitely Atlanta. I go to the Plaza down there, and we'll just—I'll plan my vacations around going to. To the plaza and just watch a bunch of movies. movies. And we're cheap. Our, our classic film series is just five bucks a ticket. Oh, you can't yeah. beat that. So Especially with high quality projection. High quality projection. I, I make I make sure we get the best looking prints of the film that we can. I make sure we, we, we play the sound the best that we can get out of them. It's a little tricky with the older films sometimes because of the nature of what you've got to work with. But, you know, it's I, I don't want people to have a bad experience when they come to see a movie yeah. at the Capitol. Yeah, that's great. That's I love seeing you took your passion and made yeah. it into something you can share. I just got lucky and someone's like, hey, do you want to program some value? I was like, oh, yes. Please. It's who you know. Believe me, 90% of everything I've ever accomplished has been dumb yeah. luck and meeting the right people. That's how we ended up here tonight. I yeah. Really, I tried to go somewhere else and they were full and I came back to John. We seem to do everything in John City Brewing just because I can always come in here and go, Cat, can I please <laughs> shoot a video when you play? I have to try their really nice sarsaparilla, which is incredibly wonderful. I have to say. Wait, I've got to come and try this. I think that's the only thing I haven't tried on the menu. I'm gonna have to come back for some sarsaparilla. I, I am a teetotaler for no like particular reason, yeah, but um, so I like that they have something that I can enjoy. So just been like, yeah, I'll just have a water. And, and it's handmade, like everything it's else. It's delicious. Here. <laughs> it is. I, I'm very impressed. It's awesome. Yeah, they're good. They're good people yeah. here, but I've. I've gone on about them too much in the past. People are like, why don't you always promote them? Like, well, they're good they're, to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're good to me. Why I mean, it's one reason why my low for call and I talk about Warner Archive a lot is because they, they're kind enough to send me streamers. So, oh, really? Yeah, I'm, I'm very fortunate. That's awesome. I've, I've been on their press list for a couple of years at this point. And they very kindly will send me Blu rays and oh, stuff like that coming up. Because old, old films is. It's a passion I don't indulge in a lot anymore. Right. I, I canceled my cable. 
but when I had it, I was the Turner Classic Movies guy. Oh, I love that. Show. You know, they would have those Sunday specials and, where they would debut an old Lost movie or something like that, and I was always there. Yeah. And I just, and, and when I was younger, I, I studied film and studied all this stuff. It's funny, I ended up as a tech guy and a, and a video guy, but that, that was kind of what was my entry into it. I'm like, I don't want to do anything else at college. Let's see what video's like. Well, and my I can whole, do movies. Yeah, my whole thing with classic film is, you know, even if someone has never seen something, say, from the 40s, if, if you can tell someone who kind of knows what you like, there is a film for you out there. Yeah. Like, you know, oh, well, I don't know about black and white. Well, if you just choose black and white as that's the color palette they chose, then right. you're in. Because, I mean, Billy, we're showing Billy Wilder's The Apartment in March at the end. Oh. Which is one Gosh, of my favorite films. I haven't seen that in and ages. I can't imagine that movie in color. The black and white works for the story. Like I can't yeah. imagine Bride of Frankenstein in color. Oh God, no! That's one of my. That's yeah. another of my top favorite movies of all well, time. I think we're gonna have it in October. Again. I will be there yeah. because that that movie. You know, some works of art will become. Your, that's one of your touchstones of your life. Yeah. And to me, Bride of Frankenstein. I learned so much just about composition and. And it's lighting. Such, <laughs> I think it's better than the original film. Absolutely. I mean, it's such I a I like the original movie. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I love Universal. Like, for me, I'm weird with horror because I don't like gore. I can't handle but I like Evil Dead. The yeah. friends of mine are like, no, this is Warner Brothers. This is cartoons. And I was right. like, okay. And then they showed it to me. And I was like, oh, I get it. Yeah, this is very funny. But I, I can't handle stuff that's like super right. gory. But gothic kind of universal monsters I love. Stuff like uh, there's a really great film from 61, The Haunting with yeah. Deborah Carr. Yeah. I love that. So I'm, I'm, I am I'm have my caveats with horror. And like I said, you, you, I'll watch Wooden Castle all day long. Yeah, you know? I get it. I get that, though. Me, I've, I divided two camps. I love that stuff, uh-huh. but I go, I, I subscribe to Shudder, okay. so I can get my, my super gory up Oh, to friends the of mine, like, I, I think it's so cool they've got Joe Bob Briggs back on there, because I have yeah. memories of seeing him on the I, I was reading his collections of his columns mm-hmm. in the 80s, long before he started doing TV oh, and stuff, I, and when he started doing TV, I, I begged my parents to get cable so I could see, see Joe Bob. I, uh, <laughs> one of the places I write for the retro set, I just finished, I think it'll be published on Friday, well, the Friday that we're shooting this. Um, I, I got to review the second season of The Outer Limits, the original TV series. Oh, yeah. It came on Blu ray. They've just done a Blu ray set of the original series. Wow. And on the bonus disc, they have all these TNT Monster Vision reels from when they used to do Outer Limits Night. Yeah. And watching it was just like a nostalgia bomb oh, of how awesome. kind of weird cable TV used to be. <laughs> yeah. I was like, why, why did cables become normal? This I miss awesome. it. I, I miss the old Nick at night, painfully. Exactly. Painfully. I, I was I was there on the ground floor of that one because when when they started doing the cheesy movies, mm-hmm. I'd already been a cheesy movie fan for a decade with my best buddy. Yeah. And so I was like, I, how have they shown a cheesy movie I've not seen from the university video and photo supply yeah. down here? And, uh, They're out there. It's an endless well. And then Gilbert Gottfried hosted it, and then it was Rhonda Shear. Oh, yeah. The Up All Night Girl. Yes, yeah, so He just, he just wrote an autobiography, and I'm really tempted to get it. <laughs> this is how bad I had it for that old that old show. But, yeah, I lo- love that kind of stuff. And it, I think that it probably unhealthily influenced me more than yeah. I'm willing to admit. Uh, I know some people who are my, my age. I'm, I'm 34, and we all grew up. We grew up on Nickelodeon, but we also watched a lot of Nick at Night, and I think that weird sense of humor they had just yeah. burned into our brains. Like, I vividly remember they, they ran this thing saying, hey, we found their hidden messages in Donna Reed episodes. And it was like, drink your milk, marry a doctor. Right. And as a kid, you're, you just kind of take all this at face value, and you're like, oh, okay, cool. Right. You, know, you, you don't process it as being like, oh, this is where we're having fun. It's like, okay, cool, that's work, I'm into it. If you could do something... You got the you, you got those projects. Yeah. If you could do anything, if you if you could do that magical unlimited funding project that you haven't done yet, done what yet. would you do? Gosh, that's a good question. I mean, I know it's 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 a big question too. Yeah. So I understand. It takes I, a little. I I would love to do some kind of a of a very weird TV special. Yeah. In which I kind of touch on all the weird tropes of TV that I saw as a kid. <laughs> like, I, like, like something that I, like I would call up NBC and say, hey, can I open my show with your The Falling Programs and Color Logo? Like that kind of crazy <laughs> right. stuff. 
And I grew up in those those days yeah. in the seventies. I, I honestly love it. Yeah, if, if I if I if I I would love to do one like kind of just crazy, really weird. Full creative control TV special, <laughs> which part of which would be I would write that I would get to go to the prices right and spin the wheel. Because I just, you know, I know, I, I know that goal. Yeah. yeah, I would write write that. that Although if I get two, spin the wheel, play Plinko. I know well, I can do it. Well, if it's my special, I'll put both in. There. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, if, if I had unlimited, that's funds, a noble goal. That's that's what I to do a creative project. That's what I would love to I, do. Because I grew up in front of the TV. And, it framed my reference for everything. Yeah. I, I never asked for it to. I never had a choice. That was kind of me because I had severe allergies as a kid, so oh. I couldn't be out a whole lot. Right. And, you know, growing up in the 90s, there were all these... Cable was still pretty fresh, man. Yeah. And all these channels were just like, well, we don't know what we got 24 hours for, so they just filled it with reruns. I mean, <laughs> right. like, that's why I like... The, that's why I love old Dragon in the original Mission Impossible, which... I should have no right to have an, a really an awareness of them, but I saw them all on TV as a kid. And the 60s Green Hornet show, which absolutely. I think is one of the coolest things ever. The, the, the Kato show, as I like to call yes, it. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And the, and the great crossover with Batman, where you know, they, they turned up. The great crossover. Hey, I'm, I'm a hardcore Adam West fan, so. <laughs> I got no problem yeah, with that. that, that, that I is loved like, Batman. Like, the, the, the front plate on my car is the is a replica of the Adam West Batmobile license. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah, that one <laughs> Gotham City. <laughs> Because I love it. Like, it's just, like, when I, when I was growing up, like, I, there, there were the Tim Burton films and the Adam West show and the animated series. It all was just the same to me. I never right. thought I never thought one was like, right. oh, they're all just different versions of the same thing. I never was like, well, this is the real Batman. This is the fake one. I was just like, it's all Batman. It's all Batman. It's interesting because I'm a little older than you, and when I was a kid, there was only one Batman. Mm-hmm. Adam West. Mm-hmm. There had been a 40s Batman, which we could watch on PBS on, on Saturday those, afternoon. Those are weird. Those shorts yeah. That was like, uh, he's called Batman, he wears a cape. Okay, we, we got it from here. Oh, my favorite part is that the, the bat, there's like a, an oak desk in the bat cave and it's just canvas. Yeah. It's like, this is the bat cave. It's just an oak desk and Batman's just like, well, like, where are those photos of Spider-Man, you know? <laughs> yeah, but Adam West was, was the Batman. And so when the Tim Burton ones came along, mm-hmm. I was old enough that I was up here at Mountain Empire Comics with the late John. He passed away just uh, just last year. And uh, we were like, they've run Batman. Batman's done. Batman's never going to be any good. This is the worst thing that's ever happened. Michael Keaton's a comedian. We hate this. This is terrible. We can't deal. There was no internet, so we had to yeah. do this in person. Yeah. And then the movie came out, and we're like, uh, it was pretty it's good. It was pretty cool. I mean, yeah, it was really awesome. I mean, did you see the part where... And then, ah, yeah, ah, and then we were just all in. Yeah. And that was Batman. He was on Michael Keaton on my wall growing up. And Big it, poster. And it was the nostalgia, I think, that made us... That made us really love it. Because it's like, wait, they've taken our campy, ridiculous cartoon and made it like a comic, which yeah. was dark and cool. And that was, that's what we were really I have such a soft spot for that, for that first time. Do you think that... I hate, I hate to go to the kids today part. Okay, sure. But let's talk about them kids today. Oh, with their Snapchats and the Twitters. <laughs> with, with their phones. <laughs> with their phones. And, and whatever and this thing is. And the 23 skidoo. You're right. <laughs> Listen to that jazz. <laughs> <laughs> but do you Doing think that, that those classic movies, those classic TV shows, are those going to be relevant to kids that are growing up in the... Let's go see Aquaman in 4DX and shake you up like a milkshake. I think the movies, absolutely, because there is a huge number of millennials who are classic movie fans. Yeah. I mean, if you go to, I have friends who go to the TCM Film Fest every year, and it's all a lot of young people. Oh, that's awesome. And on Twitter, there's a passion of classic film community. Yeah. And I've met a lot of good friends through that. Um, that's actually one way how I kind of got to know some people where, where I was like, oh, we'll send you some... Blu-rays if you're right about like, okay, sure, please. That's awesome. No, I, I think so. For TV, I, I think less. And I think partly because there's no place out there showing the old... I mean, a lot of the old shows when they're on TV are presented for... The, oh, well, this... Remember when TV was like this? That's right. They're kind of a niche channel they're that kind runs of done nothing. Yeah. And like when I grew up, they could not, was like, okay, we're preserving things here. Here's right. this weird... Like, you got to give context to people because... I think you could show anyone the Triple Bites the Dust episode of the Mary Tyler Moore show and they would find it funny. <laughs> right. Um, and, I think, and I think there are episodes of the Dick Van Dyke show that are completely uh, evergreen. Oh, 
But I can watch it like beginning to end every time. But I don't, I don't know that like Dragnet without context yeah. people because I've, I've watched some the other day and it seems especially square now. Yeah. Especially square. <laughs> like one guy gets caught with half a joint and the whole episode is just like, well, you're going to become a horrible criminal now and you're going to burn down the, the, the tire warehouse. Right. And, well, and, and I say that with love to Jack Webb, who I could listen to that monotone. But that, but that was long. Jack's that view was of the world. Thing, yeah. I mean, there was... It's there was uh, white, it is of and the era. Black. Yeah. And that was and it's it. painfully of the era. Yeah, that's which is one of the things I kind of like about it. Right. If I'm telling the truth. But yeah, yeah um, I definitely think there's classic films that will endure. And you know, maybe if, 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 if there's a place for people to see the shows and maybe kind of come to them on their own terms, absolutely. Because I, I, I have cousins who are pretty much grown now, but when they were kids, I would show them Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, and it plays every time. I get to find anyone who doesn't like, find that movie charming. <laughs> right. How can you not laugh at Lou Costello? He's, he's perfect. Every time. That's one of, that's one of the classics. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and that's one of the reasons why I feel very passionate about what I do with the Capitals, because I want young people to come and see these films and get a little context, and that's why I step there and say, okay, here's why this film is done this way, or here's kind of what's happening in the right. world at the time. Because it, it helps you to, to kind of, oh, well, okay, I can kind of translate that to now and get an idea of, of what's happening here. And then, I do think, though, that the Twilight Zone is probably still, still here. Twilight Zone literally made me who I am today. Yeah. When I was a kid, I didn't see the show. Oh, because, really? Because it was the early 80s, late 70s, and again, we didn't have cable, and yeah. it wasn't on a local channel, but I'd heard so much about it. I went to the library, and I bought Rod Serling's original stories. Oh, wow. That he, so I was reading these collections of the original That's stories great. that became episodes because I couldn't watch television. Yeah. And those stories blew my mind. And I'm like, oh, this, this has to be a great show. If these yeah. are this, and then when I finally could watch the Twilight Zone, I was all in. To this day, it's it's reverential to me. That's the, I'm, the Bible I'm to me. Very optimistic for the new version of Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele, I think, could do very it. excited because when I saw it Get Out, it, it I they already announced that that, that that his Twilight Zone revival was happening before I saw Get Out. So when I saw Get Out, I went, nope, he's the one. Oh, he's right the on. one. That makes me feel a lot better. Yeah. I had to see Get Out. Yeah, yeah no, I, I saw it. I saw it and I was like, no, he's the one who should be in the Twilight Zone. I, I like him a lot. I, I like his... And you know, like, the irony, though, to all of this is, like, we have so much access to it now. Like you said, when you were growing up, you didn't have the access to see much of the stuff, but now... It's overwhelming. It's, it is. I mean, I have, I have streaming guilt because I have Netflix and Hulu and Prime, mm. and I have a Roku that has all of these channels and channels and channels of the old 50s and 60s public domain movies. You want me to tell you what my guilty pleasure with Amazon Prime is? What's that? They have Pressure Luck on there, the 80s game show. Oh, no way. Yeah. Which, like, I, I could those easily... On YouTube. Oh, yeah. I could spend a day <laughs> watching old game shows. Like, easy. And then you... I try to find the pattern before the guy got oh, yeah. before the guy exploited it. I know one of them. I know one of them, but I figured it out on one and I can call it every time. It is hard. It yeah, is. I, I know the one that gets it to the big bucks square. <laughs> but that's one of the that's part of the fun of the show. Oh yeah. So, is it really a pattern? That is. <laughs> yeah, I, I could our mutual friend Daniel Leach is drawing me holding a baby wing. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Because the actual drawing is <laughs> I've seriously thought about when I was a kid, again, we had three channels. Game shows were my thing. I oh, yeah. loved, I was passionate about game shows. And, I, and I've seriously thought about taking my my production channel, Tech Bohemia, is what I do all these things under, and make it just a, a local game show channel. Well, that'd be fun. Build build the games, take it to different different bars and restaurants yeah. and record it and just play game shows. Well, they don't, like, outside of, like, Jeopardy and Price is Right and Wheel of Fortune, well, in those ABC ones, I think, come back every summer, yeah. every, all the game shows are kind of, it's extreme now, yeah. and kind of in the wake of Millionaire, I'm like, yeah. what happened? They just... You want to know what my favorite game show ever was? What, what? Uh, let me know if you've heard of it. The Liars Club. Yeah, Alan Ludden hosted the that. Liars Club. It came on when I was a kid. It came on seven in the afternoon, and you have a panel of four people, and you put an object on a lazy Susan in front of them, and every one of them tells you what the object is. One of them's lying. Oh, that's fun. And I'm, I, it's either no, I'm sorry, all of them are lying except one's telling the truth. I'm sorry. Okay. And that was the fun. It took 
the best of, of uh, Match Game, which is my favorite all-time game show, and, and, uh, and uh, a bunch of other celebrity shows. It really gave it a performance angle. Oh, that sounds nice. It's like, who could lie the best? It's beyond acting. You see if any of that's out there, because some of that yeah. lines up on YouTube. Yeah, I recommend yeah. it. Match Game is what I watch instead of the news in the because it's on at 8 o'clock on Game Show Network, and I'm like, well, I could watch what's happening in the world, or I could watch Charles Nelson Rally. Not a hard decision. There's no contest. Not, not a difficult no decision. Contest. Yeah. They've, they've got an entire YouTube channel devoted. These people, about every week, upload a new episode of Match Game. Isn't that crazy? They're putting every episode on, and it's like 15 years of daily episodes. So, you know, people always talk about YouTube for like the, the people who make stuff just for YouTube, but it's a wealth of like, it's a TV time right. machine. I wish I had Whoa, anything that people wanted to see. There is this, some friends of mine on my birthday, which was last month, I said, okay, I want us all to get in the group chat and watch something on YouTube together. Okay, cool. Uh, it was a Tilly Savalas musical variety special from 75. When everybody got a musical variety called special. Called Telly Who Loves You, Baby. Uh, we I finally like, saw that. It's and whoever uploaded it got access to the master, so the commercials are in this thing too. Oh, that's the and best! Telly Savalas in a tuxedo singing to an audience at Television City, opening it up, dresses go jet going, nobody move for the next hour you belong to me, and then launches into this disco number. And I'm just kind of like, this is the stuff we should send to space. Exactly. Not, you know, Shakespeare. Let's, let's just let's send Telly Savalas singing Who Loves You. A song called Who Loves You. You've seen the uh, Paul Lynn Halloween special? I watch it about every Halloween. That's one of the greatest. That, that's like the pinnacle of, of television to me. Everything that could that should not be on television was crammed into one And place Kiss. For with Kiss. Reason, with Kiss. <laughs> And in Witchy Poo from the Witchy Poo, yeah, Witchy, yeah. yeah. Witchy Poo and uh, Margaret, Margaret from yeah. uh, The Wizard of Oz is in it. Like, okay, it's so. <laughs> I, I feel man. like they captured Paul Lynn as most Paul Lindist. That is, that is who it's I hope Paul Lynn really was. Unfiltered Paul Lynn. <laughs> yeah, it's the fact that there was a time when there was like, oh well, we need a Halloween special. Paul Lynn. <laughs> Everybody loves. Paul. So just the thing I love about that is at some point down the line, someone in an office had to write a check <laughs> for this to take place. Right. And I love that so much. The concept of, well, you need a giant foam rubber lobster for your bad movie. And son, rip, there you go. Yeah, one of my best friends and I, we watch Donnie and Marie specials like they're going out of town. It's not just the, the show. No, that's yeah. not enough. We want those Osmond, the full Osmond specials. The full thing. Wow, we, we've almost made it through a couple of them. <laughs> it is everything wrong and great about the 70s. Well, and then you've got, you know, the Star Wars Holiday Special, oh. which is the, the Mount Olympus. <laughs> yeah, we, we trained to watch that one again. It's I've like, okay. it twice in my life, the whole thing. I've got it, and I'll, I have people come over, oh, you've got the Holiday Special, I let's watch it. I'm like, oh, let's see how far you get. Uh -huh. I, I have a friend who is a die-hard, like, has Star Wars tattoos, cannot make it through all of them. Oh, it's, that's special. It's really, it is, really, really bad. They, they, they usually drop out around the time B. Arthur starts singing. See, I make it through B. Arthur, I can't get past Cicely Tyson. I mean, I love Cicely Tyson, I'm sure. The but... moment the moment when you know if you're going to be able to watch all that is when the Jefferson Starship starts singing. <laughs> at, at that point, you have two options. You can either go, okay, I'm either all in... <laughs> Or I'm done. Right. And this is a special with many of those points. Yeah, with Chewbacca's <laughs> grandfather. Oh. I don't... He looks like a carpet. I don't know what he is. His name's Itchy for God's Just sake. Just say something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, if, if, you have, if you don't know what we're talking about, you really owe it to yourself to watch it. It's us. out there, and you can find it, despite <laughs> that people don't want it out there. It's out there. If you're watching it for the first time... Please leave a comment. Let me know yes. what you think. Let me know how far you made it in. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, classic TV, classic movies. We're talking the same language. Yeah. Anything else? Anything else you got up? I, we got yeah. lost in, um, in uh, I just movies. published a book. No way. Yeah. A short oh book, my a, a novella, really. That's awesome. With the help of some friends. I say it's just published, not just written, because I wrote it six years ago, basically. Yeah. That's yeah. the way that yeah. stuff kind of goes. And, and, it, and it does take some classic TV cues for it. It's kind of like Murder, She Wrote, Set in Green Acres. Oh, that's awesome. What's that going uh, It's on, on Amazon. It's called Saved on Sunday, Dead on Monday. Oh, well, definitely. Send me, send me a link to that. So I will. I put yeah. that down yeah, there. Yeah, it is on Amazon. It's a quick read. It's... um. 
I just thought, you know, there's been the trope of Miss Marple and Jessica Fletcher, that kind of widowed or spinster kind of amateur taker, and I thought, okay, there's times when I watch Murder, She Wrote, which I've got the whole thing on the DVD. It's what I watch before I go to bed. I just have to go to my parents' house. It's always playing somehow. <laughs> And you watch it and you go, okay, now why doesn't she just like kick the guy in the cross? Those are the, those are the thoughts that I have. And I thought, what if there was a character who kind of would do those things and would kind of swear? Like, I thought, watch Jessica Fletcher from the South and swore a little. That's awesome. So that's kind of so, a so my grandma as, as a sleuth. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Just a, a Southern lady who, you know, was a was a teenager in the 60s and just doesn't care anymore and she's just out there solving this crime because she thinks some, some, something's up. I love it. I'm going to get that one. Please do. Is that on Amazon right now? or is It's it on Amazon right now. Oh, okay. And I will have it for sale at the Blue Plate shows coming up. Oh, right on. I will gladly sign you a copy that I'm sure will be worth $10 one day on eBay. It'll little, literally be worth maybe dozens of dollars. Maybe dozens of dollars. Dozens of dollars. You might not be able to put your child through college on it, but you can get them a Krispy Kreme. So... <laughs> I love novellas and short stories. That's when when I back back in the ancient history when I used to write, it was always short. I wanted what can I do in the tightest, smallest package possible. Well, I kind of wrote it short because I thought I don't know that I can sustain this thing for a whole book, and that seemed really daunting to me. Yeah, because you know it's got my humor in there, which I think people who've read my column knows that my humor's a particular brand. I, right. think, I think I can safe, safely say that. And I thought, I don't know if that will sustain itself for an entire book if people get you worn down on, you know, there, there's a funeral home in this world where uh, one of their slogans is like, we're burying your loved ones is a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Nice. And I thought, I don't, think, I don't think I can do that for a whole book, but a, a, a little short, breezy yeah. read. It's only five, it thinks, yeah, I believe it's five bucks. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, go buy it and, you know, I'll... I'll have a pizza at Main Street on it. You get it signed at the Blue Plate Special Show. You get it signed at, at, at Blue Plate. I mean, you got to print it out first. Yeah. <laughs> I'll print it out. I think there'll be an e-book of it, too, at some point. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, I'll sign people's iPads if they want, but they may not like it. <laughs> right. And you, you can pick it up at the show. Pick it up at the show. I will have copies available at the Blue Plate shows, yes. That's awesome. Uh, one more time. Blue Plate is going to be at Blue Plate the 22nd, 23rd, 23rd at the Capitol Theater, 7 o'clock, $5. It'll be our Gatlinburg Improv Festival send-off show. Um, it's going to be fun. If I mean, people have never seen a Blue Plate show, they really should consider making the, the, the trek out. It sounds like it. And the trick is, I, I like to say that our demographic are the people that live in the Tri-Cities yet don't like to leave their homes. <laughs> it's like, oh, look, they're doing things. We're worth leaving your home for. It's really... You know, get out. Go find these things, especially if it's not in the Tri-Cities. Yeah. From Johnson City, downtown, you can get to Greenville in 45 minutes. Yeah. It's not a bad drive. And that's and not even racing. No. And it's a great drive. And I think There's parking downtown. There's two-hour signs, but they, they ignore that, at that, that, that on the weekends. So. Oh, right. And you can sometimes park in the Joe and Morgan Inn lot if you're coming to the show. Hint. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun time. And... And we've, and we've performed like in, up here in Kings Bar. We've not performed in Bristol yet. Yeah. But we do perform up here around the area right some on. too. But yeah, Capital's kind of our, our, our home base. Sorry for you editing that and I did with my it'll, ankle it'll hitting all come the out table. Post. That's what they always say on TV. It'll, it'll all come out post. post. Now you're still posting jokes. I haven't, so. I haven't quite figured out what that, what that really you know what steps go into that but I say it every time I just picture it's some guy in a closet with a, with a big panel in front of me like that does it <laughs> it's, it's me with some real real tape <laughs> I gotta splice this <laughs> I think I was one of the last people ever to learn to edit reel to reel they're like you have to know this this is your class this is your class that was my final it was on reel to reel I had a blue pencil and so, uh, some scotch tape and a reel to reel that I recorded and Literally the day that I finished that class, they said, "Well, we're done with reel to reels. We're going digital." So never once, no. never once used that. Yeah. You get you an archivist job then with that knowledge. That's true. That's, That's true. I have a, a, a bright future in sitting in dusty back rooms. <laughs> a bright future of digitizing old Price is Right episodes. Right. Actually, that that's a do. job. No, I would totally. That's a job. If, that, if somebody's hiring that one, you yeah. call me because I'm your guy. I would. Yeah, I grew up. My grand, my my, she was my mamma. I had a grandma on one side, a mamma on the other, and mamma loved, loved Bob Barker. She would have left my my papa <laughs> if Bob Barker had walked down the street. 
and she she was obsessed with Bob Barker. So my childhood is sitting with a little old lady who was just saying terribly lustful things about Bob Barker. <laughs> So I had to love the show yeah, after that. You have to. And I started watching Drew Carey. I'm like, are there little old ladies somewhere lusting, lusting Drew. over Drew Carey? I don't know. Probably yeah, not. I, don't I know. like Drew. I like him a I lot. love Drew. Yeah. His TV show is one of oh, his TV show was one of my favorite. Very underrated sitcom. His they would do every season. They would do a live show, mm. and I would get the East Coast and the West Coast to watch both of them because it turned out they would. Im- when they did, when they screwed up their lines, they would improv <laughs> and throw everyone off. And then they, and at one point, I think it was the last season, they screwed up so bad they just improv a whole big chunk of it. It didn't even follow the script, and I just thought that was genius. It, I'm sure if people watched it on the West Coast would never have noticed. Yeah. I only knew because I'd watched the East Coast feed. First. I think Thirty Rock did that. They changed yeah. some things up for their live shows for, for both coasts. Yeah. That's awesome. I didn't get to see those. Those. I think that covers everything that I, I do. With yeah, my time. Well, that's a lot of stuff you got going yeah, on. It's but it's all fascinating. Crazy. I could, I, mean, I could talk yeah. about movies forever. But I, pre- I appreciate you coming out, Andy. Thank you for having me. I, yeah. I, I appreciate you. Uh, I hope having me on. I hope to catch some blue plate special. And I don't just say that. It's, yeah. it's it sounds it's one of those things. Unless it's put, you know, something well, we if you don't put in front of the stage. So. <laughs> so I'm not hiding. Yeah. No. We're like, mm, is he here? Maybe it's the guy wearing the big fake bushy mustache on his beard. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Sir, remove your sombrero, please. You know, people in the group, they, they, they do kind of give me a little grief because I'm the only one that doesn't have a beard <laughs> of all the guys. You know, I'm like, well, one of us has to keep, you know, the razor industry right. in business. You got demographics you got to yeah, think yeah, of. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you hanging out Thank with you. us. And, uh, yeah. We hope to have you back. You know, right. come, come back sometime. We'll talk again when you got something else going on. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thanks. And we'll see you uh, next time. Who knows what we're doing next time? I don't. <laughs> that was fun. I appreciate it. Thank I hope you. you had a good time. Oh, yeah.